Hey, Jonathan here at Colfax Math, the Practical Math channel. Today I'm going to go over torque wrenches and some of the math behind them. They are essential tools if you're going to wrench on anything. I teach high school math and wood shop, and I still wrench on stuff all day long, whether I'm fixing equipment in the shop, working on cars at home, and torque wrenches are a really big part of me fixing stuff. Understanding them isn't too hard and the math behind them isn't too hard either. So let's go over that right now. So to start with, I have two different type of torque wrenches right here. This one's analog and you turn the handle to set the force and this one's digital and you set it electronically on there. They're both very useful. They both have different applications. Understanding them both is probably the key. They are both 3 8 inch drive. So that's the size of the socket you put on there. Um, they both go from 5 to 100 pounds and they also are both precision instruments and should be treated accordingly. These are not pry bars, you don't just drop them when you're done with them. They should always be turned down to a lowest setting before you put them away because there's spring actuators in there. You don't want that spring under a lot of tension, it'll knock out the calibration. Put them on the lower setting, put them in the box that they came in and store them in kind of a moisture free environment. Torque wrench right here, bring it right up to the camera. You can see on the front there, there are two different settings. That right there is foot pounds and then on the back is newton meters. So torque is a measurement of both force and a distance. That distance is radius from the center. So the force on the standard size here in the US, foot pounds, foot pounds Pounds is how much force you're putting down on the handle, and feet is how far away you are from the radius. So it takes into account the length of the distance from the socket to your center of your hand on the handle where the force is being exerted, and that's what these numbers refer to. How you set, how you set the foot pounds on this torque wrench right here, you pull this back and then this handle spins freely, and as you spin this handle, what you're doing as you're tightening up the spring inside. So you pull this and you spin it to whatever foot pounds you want. Let's say I want to set it at 20 foot pounds. So I'm set at 20 foot pounds there. I'm right on the bottom of that mark right there at 20 foot pounds. And then if I want individual singular units, I just turn it past that. I know it's hard to read on there. So one little mark right there is 1, 1.5, 2, and that's in addition to the 20. So now I'm at 22 foot-pounds, 22.5, 23, 24, and then I'm at 25, and it's a zero mark because I'm at the next increment up there. So now I'm at 25 foot-pounds. Again, if I want to use a metric, I would use the Newton meters on the back. Newtons is a force, meters is a distance from the radius. So now I have this torque wrench set at 25 foot-pounds of force, and then I could see how that works if I'm tightening something down. So let's take a look right here in the vise. So right here in the vise, I just have two nuts on a bolt. I'll clamp the bottom nut into the vise. Get a socket, put it on my torque wrench. I'm set at 25 foot-pounds. I put it on there, and then I'm going to crank it, and then listen for the click. I'm not cranking from anywhere except for my hand centered on the handle. And then when it clicks, listen for it. That click right there means I'm at 25 foot-pounds of force. So that nut is on 25 foot-pounds of force. All right, let's take a look at this digital one now. Um, the digital one, there's the on and off right there. The F right here is a function key for your units. So right there, you're in foot-pounds. If you scroll through that, you could select kilogram centimeters, a metric torque. That's actually a degree measure right there. That's a newton meter, so newton is a force, meters a distance on the radius. That's, what is that, inch-pounds, and then we want to measure foot-pounds. So this is currently set at 25 foot-pounds. We could turn it up to, say, 30 foot-pounds, anywhere up to 100 on a 3 8 inch drive. 
or down to five. So actually we'll put this one at 15 first. So we'll put this at 15 foot pounds. So here's my bolt nut locked in the vise. Here's another nut screwed right on there. Just finger tight. One cool thing about this is there's a warning as you get close to the torque setting. Can you see that here? Yeah. So if you look on here, as I get close to that torque setting, it'll turn, when I get within 90% of 15 foot pounds, it'll turn green and, and give a little beat. And when right when I hit 15, it'll give me a different audio signal and turn red. So watch, I get closer. So there's 14, and then once I surpass 15, it turned red and gives me a continuous signal. All right, so that's how torque wrenches work. Very useful. I use them all the time. Uh, I just got some airbags for my truck to put a lift on it, and they have torque settings on there. Uh, I, I think I have some video of that. I'll clip that in next. Uh, the one other thing I want to mention to you before we go over some of the math behind these torque wrenches is that safety has to come first. You always have to have safety glasses on. You never know when something's going to break and a little piece is going to come shooting into it. Just got an airlift kit for the back of a Ford truck, and here's a perfect example here. These are the bolt-in airbags. You can see right there it has the torque specs right on there. So that's why you need a torque wrench, and it's in foot-pounds. Oh, it's metric, too. See that bolt just shared right there? That bolt broke because it wasn't torqued correctly. It was over-torqued, which led to the bolt breaking. Then on the torque wrench, we have 10 foot-pounds. We'll just crank it till it clicks. Is that a click? Yep, there it is. So now that nut is on that bolt is 10 foot-pounds. Let's use a regular socket and take it off and see if we could do this calculation. So the first thing we need is a length of radius. So we use a tape and measure from the center of the bolt to kind of the center of the force you're applying. So we'll call that a 7-inch radius. So that's a 7-inch radius. And then we'll use a spring scale to take it off. And we'll see if I can capture this on film. So we'll hook it on there, and then we'll see how many pounds it pops off at. So go ahead and it has to stay perpendicular. The scale is now at 10 pounds. <laughs> so I would say that popped at about 16 pounds. So that popped at 16 pounds on a 7-inch radius. Let's see if that works. So let's go. I'll put the camera over my shoulder at my desk, and we'll do some of those calculations and see if we can figure it out. Okay, taking a look at torque, it is a twisting force that causes rotation. So it's always in the case of some sort of round gear, and some sort of lever and that lever could be a point on the outside of the gear or an additional lever but it's always about rotation around an axis point there are two parts to torque one is the length of the lever in this case in the u.s measured in feet and then the amount of force exer exerted onto that lever and that's measured in pounds so if you can you can never really create much more force and the amount of weight you have. So, you know, if you were to stand on this and you weigh 170 pounds, you would be creating 170 pounds of force. How long that lever is times your pounds will give you your torque. So torque is foot pounds. Usually it's actually said pounds feet, but I grew up calling it foot pounds. And it's those two different units. So the distance away from the center of the rotation is your radius, and that's going to be measured in feet. And if it's not in feet, you're going to have to convert it to feet. 
and then the amount of force going down on that lever perpendicular to that lever or actually tangent to the circle at that point which would be perpendicular to the radius and that's measure in pounds. So one example would be let's say I have a lever out here that is only six inches long and I exert 10 pounds of force on that lever. Well, I have to convert this into feet. So six of 12, right? So six inches is half a foot times the 10 pounds of force. And that would give me five foot pounds of torque. So obviously the longer the lever, the greater the torque or the greater the force, the greater the torque. So let's take a look at that example that we did out, out in the shop. The lever was seven inches long, and the amount of force on that spring scale, on that spring scale, the amount of force, it looked like it said about 16 pounds. And that bolt, or the nut, was actually torqued down to 10 foot pounds. So let's see how accurate our calculations are compared to the torque wrench. So that's 7 of 12 inches, so 7 twelfths of a foot times the 16 pounds. It was kind of hard to read that. Let's see how many foot pounds that is. So on my calculator, I'm going to do 7 divided by 12, 0.58. I'm going to multiply that by those 16 pounds to get 9.3 foot pounds, foot pounds of torque. So 9.3 foot-pounds of torque, that's actually pretty accurate to the um, torque wrench at 10 foot-pounds of force. Certainly this is much more accurate because a lot of our inaccuracies, our measurement wasn't quite accurate because our hands, you know, probably four inches across. Um, it was hard to read that scale popping off, um, but that's the general idea. So just to sum it up, torque is a measure of rotation and force. So it's a twisting force that causes rotation and it's measured in foot pounds in the US or in science or in foreign countries. The metric equivalent is Newton meters, but pretty much everything here is still foot pounds. And if you could figure out the length of the radius away from the center in feet and the amount of force in pounds, you multiply the two together to get the torque. All right, well, I'd really like to hear your comments below if that made sense uh, and where you use torque wrenches.